Welcome to the NEC Big Game in round 10 of the Winfield Cup between Parramatta and Canterbury Bankstown with this super contest today coming from a packed stadium here at Parramatta. The Eels lead the Premiership on 16, Manly and South next on 14 and Canterbury just one behind on 13. Parramatta and the Bulldogs have already met once this year. It was on the 9th of April in a midweek cup clash with the Eels victors 16 to 10. And as the Blue and Golds run on for another home game at the stadium, it's significant that in winning all four home games, they've notched up 116 points for and only 20 against. Their team for today is Taylor, Atkins, Laurie, Ella, Growth, Kenny, Sterling, Price, Sharp, Wynn, Lee Beater, Vince Carr comes in for Michael Mosley and Jeff Bugden. Well, today is Canterbury's first trip to the stadium. For the past four years, Every time they've played the Eels in Premiership matches, it's been on their home ground in Bulldog territory. Their team looks like this. Potter, Peter Mortimer, Farrah, Chris Mortimer, Sandy Campbell, Hagen in for Sigsworth, Lamb, Langmack, Folks, Gillespie, Tunks, Bugden and Dunn. And the man in charge is Mick Stone. So from left to right, it's Canterbury Bankstown in the first 40 minutes. Played by Ray Price. This is Vince Carr, the man who came into the, the hot seat at the last moment for Michael Mosley, suffering from food poisoning. Lee Beater taken in a, a four-man Canterbury tackle. No place for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. Price. Young, uh, young Bugden around the legs, tongues over the top. Sterling. They tried to put some pressure on him, and they did. Potter now. And Sandy Campbell, very fast. Taylor making the tackle. Peter Mortimer. Carr in 25, one tackle, win the other. Tunks has put it down. Fed out the back by Lamb, but the referee, Mick Stone, has ruled that it was knocked on. There's the 85 results. Parramatta won the first encounter, and then it was Canterbury by a long way in the next two. Long ball from Kenny. They'll be working for that. This is Ella. Mark Laurie. Lee Beater. Gillespie. And jumper number 10 and done in 11. Tunks in 13. So Lee Beater is a penalty going to Parramatta. Lee Beater has now taken it up twice. He's met the full wrath of the Canterbury forwards. Sterling advises the referee that they're going for line. Sterling himself was under a cloud until this morning. He apparently came down with a 24-hour flu. Likewise, Steve Folks, he was under a cloud until this morning. This is Lee Beater again. Knock on by Price. Lee Beater and Dunn exchanging words as that little knock-on comes from Ray Price. Penalty, Canterbury. Feet across against Carr. Twenty sixteen Canterbury, the twenty three is fourteen nil Parramatta the reserves. is done. Now it's Gillespie. Parameter paying the penalty there. Wynn went high and two others charged in and rammed into Wynn. This is Tunks. 
through folks a high ball out to Peter Mortimer it wasn't a good pass from Steve folks charge down successful from Parramatta they'll come up with possession played by Carr he's played in four first grade games uh, in 1985 they all were Peter Wynn Carr Dunn takes him near the halfway line sharp and the plan was to center the ball and that's what they're doing they'll probably come the blind on the next play here's Bugden five well now of course they've got the kick in in mind here's Sterling and that kick is beautifully placed I don't know that it'll reach the dead ball line they're very deep here Taylor's going through fast Peter Mortimer pursued by Taylor and grabbed in goal. It's a line dropout which brings something like 28,000 people to their feet. Give or take a few thousand that have come over from Canterbury for this match. There's the incident. Taylor gave a good chase and Peter Mortimer was unable to make the goal line. We could have no better example than that kick by Sterling that if Parramatta are going to get away with this game, it's going to be three through his kicking boot boot that they'll launch that platform. Sterling won't be happy with Graham Atkins there. He took the ball, he called for a runner, but Atkins was 20 metres behind him. Here's Lee Beater. The message is let's get up and get at him on both sides. They're hitting very hard, the Canterbury forwards penalty against Canterbury inside the five and now an eruption back where play came to a halt Lee Beater's eye will get a shot of Lee Beater's right eye but it has come up very quickly and uh, the, there were punches thrown Vince Carr he was like the meat in the sandwich here it is again. Let's see what happens. Uh, Lee Beater let a shot go from behind on Gillespie. Lee Beater has been the centre of a lot of Canterbury attention since the match got underway. I just got the feeling that they think there's a chink in, in his makeup. Talking of makeup, he'll need some too when uh, if he's planning to make an on camera appearance later. His, eye, his right eye has come up very quickly. There it is on camera for you now. So Graham Atkins has got the chance to put first points on the board from 20 metres out. He's almost in front. Graham Atkins with a very easy kick. But I wonder, is there such a thing on a day like today? He's got this. Graham Atkins kicks the goal and Parramatta lead by two points to nil in the early stages of the NEC big game, the year's biggest. Canary have adopted an interesting defensive line here. What they're doing is they're playing Terry Lamb at 5'8 in defence and Michael Hagen's going back in cover in the halfback spot. So what they're obviously looking for is Lamb to mark Kenny and keep the pressure on him. Sterling, Lowry. Laurie almost through. Sterling backed up. Price cleans the ball up at six more tackles. Penalty to Canterbury. Against Ray Price. Let's let's have a look at this. And yeah, we'll see. Pricey. That's crazy stuff from, from a man of, of his experience. When you've got the football, you don't give penalties away. It came out of frustration, quite obviously, but that's not really an excuse when you've got the football. Canterbury, they lost a player too before this match, and that, of course, was Phil Sigsworth. He's with Graham Hughes. Phil, so what was the full story? Uh, from all reports, you were cleared at yesterday's training session. Yeah, well, yesterday morning I ran and uh, it felt pretty good, and then, like, late last night or yesterday afternoon, uh, the injury flared and uh, the, my ankle swelled up, it swelled up, and uh, as it turned out, it was no good for today's game. Almost, uh, it almost stuck in his hands. 
Sorry for coming across you, Graham. Apologies to Phil Sigsworth. Well, I think Phil's heart goes back to where it should be. Phil, it also shows Canterbury's uh, depth to bring a player up like Michael Hagen. Yeah, well, Michael Hagen's been playing very well. He's a fine youngster coming into the game, and uh, there's no doubt Michael Hagen, I'm sure, will have a good game today. No difference with big match games like this one? It's going to be one or lost in the forwards? Well, uh, I think Canterbury have got the edge there in the front row. I think Peter Tunks and Paul Dunn there in the front row uh, will be the deciding factor. All right, thanks, Bob. Thank you. Penalty to Canterbury. This will be the equaliser. One would think 32 metres out right in front against the Parramatta markers. Peter Kelly, another of the Canterbury players. Well, he's not allowed to play in the match. Mother's Day 1986, and I've got news for you. There's plenty of mums at the, the Parramatta Stadium. Whether they liked it or not, I think they just had to get here if they wanted to see their old man. <laughs> Terry Lamb, they can boo all they like. I don't think it's going to affect this young man. He's very great under pressure, and he's got it. He's got it. He's got plenty of football ability too. Parramatta Canterbury, two all. You're watching the NEC big game. Oh, the ball's loose, but there's still a chance. Atkins, Farrah driving in with Lamb and Campbell. I don't think Parramatta will find their way through the centre of this Patless Canterbury Banks down defence. They're going to have to resort to the kick, such as Sterling's just put in there, or spread the ball out wide. Peter Mortimer obliged to field the ball. Tackled by Lee Beater. Parramatta, 47 tackles. That's possession held. Canterbury, 23. So you can see Parramatta's had twice as much time with the football. And the score, 2 all. Tunks. They're driving in like men in spy. Done. Good work by Peter Tunks. The kick for Farrah, and a penalty goes against against Taylor. He was the marker, but the referee ruled that he he didn't face up until the ball had left the ruck encounter. I don't know whether my eyes are playing tricks, Graham. Is that wind that wind down a dipsy doodle? Well, it has. It was only coming up in gusts before uh, behind Canterbury, and it was quite strong when it did so. It's now turned around, and the uh, the flags on the scoreboard are suggesting very strongly that it's now behind the Eels. Here's Gillespie. Lamb. Hagen. Now it's done. Hagen backed him up nicely. He threw a pass that he probably would have been better off not passing. In fact, obviously it wouldn't. But he just sort of was under too much pressure to pass it at that time. Immense push there from Canterbury as Parramatta win the scrum. Kenny being well and truly marked. They're not giving him very much room to work in at all. His price, like a good back rower out of the scrum to take one of the early plays. This is Peter Wynn. That's very much out of the manual, what you've just seen, the lock, and then a, a second rower taking a couple of plays as they get their backs out the other side. Kenny, Kenny, oh, he heard the familiar sound of Ella's voice. A that, split second too late. That was a good tackle by Paul Langmack on Kenny, and it needed to be. Parramatta had the numbers. Kenny looked for the little split. He thought he was through. Langmack had let him get past him, but then brought him down with a copybook tackle from behind. Sterling puts the torpedo punt in. That should... It'll probably stop before the dead ball line. Sterling, he knows nearly every blade of grass at the stadium. I'll tell you what, he knows the grass inside the, the end goal. And Mick Potter's, it's, there's plenty of it. Mick Potter's going to earn his money here today because the end goal, here is, here, end goal areas here are particularly big. But not only that, the grass is so long that the ball just seems to pull up. And there's no question in my mind that Sterling is aware of that and he's using every available inch of gr ground. Now it's out to Hagen, wide, and now it's Farrah, put to the ground by Jeff Bugden and Mark Lowry. Steve Folks. Yeah. 
1980 it was the Bulldogs. 81, 82, 83, it was Parramatta. 84, 85, Canterbury. So since the turn of the decade, these two sides have shared the Winfield Cup and JJ Gilton and Shield. Played by Taylor. Growth goes for a gallop. He's lost the ball, it's between his legs. He looks like he's hatching it. You might recall Glover took the ball across and scored a memorable try at Penrith one day in similar fashion. Here's Ella. Just a few metres into Canterbury's area. A match that is being played under great tension. And you can almost, you can feel both crowds, the Canterbury and Parramatta crowds, just aching at the back teeth for the crack to come their way. Played by Price on five. Sterling decides to push the ball and Gross away from one. He got the pass inside for Kenny. Kenny inside for Taylor. Taylor inside for Sterling. And Sterling picks up the first try of this big clash between the Eels and the Bulldogs. I must say to you, I thought maybe, just maybe, the pass from Growth to Kenny was a shade forward. Allowing the fact that it wasn't forward, it's been a beautiful pass by Sterling to Growth. Growth got out of one, Langmack had him in the second. That was the ball I'm talking about. But Kenny to Taylor to Sterling. And let's look on the positive side. That was a magnificent pass from Peter Sterling to set it up and then score the try. Once again, the Bulldogs' defence was breached by a long pass. Here is the one from Sterling to Growth, but Growth still had plenty to do. He needed to beat a tackle, as did Brett Kenny, back onto Taylor. I thought Taylor might have got there on his own, but he unselfishly gave the ball to Sterling, who did the rest. So the blue and gold army has been on their feet as we watch it again on the NEC replay from the cameras at grass level almost. And here's the dive for the try from Peter Sterling. Graham Atkins from right in front to attempt conversion. Straight on line for Atkins. And Parramatta lead by eight points to two in the NEC big game from the stadium. I don't mind telling you that the Minister for Sport, Federal Minister John Brown, I think he led the cheering, he led the barrackers when Sterling went in for that try a short time back. In fact, there he is sitting up there next to the Chief of his Sports Commission, Ted Harris, but Canterbury come up with the ball. No, John Mooney wouldn't have liked that at all. Taylor was under no pressure. He rang the, ran the ball out, but instead of sitting down in the tackle and giving his Parramatta players time to come back, he fought in the tackle and he conceded possession. That's against Parramatta for stealing in the tackle. And this is an easy one for Terry Lamb. Stan Jurd sharing a seat in the crowd with Paul Mayers. I guess he's around there somewhere. It's been uh, generally put forward that Canterbury are very weakened today without Kelly and, and Mortimer. Of course, you think about it, Jerd, Mayers and Cronin, they can play a bit themselves. Lamb now. He should get this one. Just off centre, 15 out. He's got it. Eight points to four, the new scoreline. Parramatta leading Canterbury in the NEC big game. First round encounter. This is Farrah. Ooh, that's bad defence by Parramatta. Terrible defence by Parramatta. Michael Potter, less one shoe. Kenny comes up with the intercept, and I'll tell you what, he almost had to come up with it. Sterling. Parramatta not getting themselves set quickly something they used to do very well from broken play was get themselves set quickly Bugden Jeff Bugden is sucking the, the oxygen in and finding the going tough at this stage here he comes again they're 32 meters out 
and five tackles are gone. The booing is uh, for one of the trainers on the field. And this is going to go over the dead ball line. So again, it's a 22 place kick to restart. In fact, what inspired uh, the attention of the crowd to the trainers going onto the ground was referee John Gosher in reserve grade. He chatted a Canterbury trainer, and uh, the crowd loved every moment of it. And all that trainer did, in fact, was go out there to pick up the, the shoe of Michael Potter and take it back to the fullback. This is Tunks. Bit of, a, bit of a skirmish breaks out amongst the crowd as Farah puts in the big kick and it's going to find the line deep inside Parramatta territory. to do with our time than take pictures of people brawling on sporting arena hills my two hates that and streakers spotlight hunters that's, that's what i call them spotlight bandits penalty to Parramatta. How are you seeing it, Graham? Well, uh, Parramatta have certainly dominated the game territorially. I think the uh, the crunch is going to come for them uh, maybe in the second half if Canterbury get a greater possession of ball. Uh, they've certainly, as I said, uh, had the better of the first half, but they haven't really been put under pressure. Canterbury making a lot of mistakes and giving away far too many penalties. Sterling finds a hole. He goes 10 metres. But then he was on the end of a beautiful tackle from uh, one of the game's best, Langmack. Here's win. Talking of state sides, city sides. Why they seem to discount lock forwards as second rowers has got me a little bit baffled. One of the first players that have on my team, Langmack, even if he was playing second row. Play down on the Canterbury 22. Sandy Campbell. It's been a very interesting game to this stage. Both sides particularly strong in defence and Canterbury making their share of errors and, and giving away penalties. But it's a game that hasn't opened up at all. Neither side really has shown uh, showed an advantage in attack. And I'm just waiting for a, for a crack to appear and one of these sides to make a split that will lead to a try. Here's Gillespie. Brett Kenny has injured an ankle. The kick now for Potter. And growth's going over, so we're going to see the big bloke bring it back. Here he comes. Part-time singer. Professional rugby league winger. Oh, that was a silly thing to do, Gross. Could have very easily been penalised. For, for not facing, facing goal, goal, goal. You're quite right, Bill. That's what I was talking about. Apart from the fact he didn't look around to see if he had a dummy half. This is Sharp. They're on the 22. Kenny still limping. Lee Beater. He's trying to get some feeling back in that ankle. This is Carr. He, he received some attention himself a few minutes back, or not even that. Here's Ella. He's dropped into Kenny's position to put in the kick, and Potter has got plenty of room to move in there. Around Ray Price, picked up by Ella. Ella will give a penalty if he doesn't let go. That's Farrah. Canada just starting to find some, some holes in the Parramatta defence. Significantly, we're getting close to half time, and a couple of Parramatta players, a couple of their bigger men, are dropping off in defence, dropping off rapidly. And Canterbury are starting to find those holes. They're running plays at them. Now it's Lamb. This is Hagen. Holds back the ball, tries to make the split himself. Play 30 metres from the Parramatta line. Here goes Folks to the 22 line. Five gone. Langmack 
Bugden, Lamb gets the kick in. Now he was the second player off the ruck. He really, he ripped their Sterling showing you the new rule. But to think on the last tackle of six that the ball could go through three sets of hands only indicates to me one thing. That what I was saying about Parramatta's urgency in defence and in charge down has dropped right off. They still lead, though, by eight points to four. Price outside the 32. Sterling around the back for win, but well read, Michael Hagan. Taylor. Sterling in the last minute of play in the first half Potter goes back with Peter Mortimer away from Taylor but not from Sterling Farrah a couple of the bigger Canterbury players are just getting back on side now so what I said about Parramatta's big men may well apply to a couple of Canterbury's as well. This is Tunks. And there's the siren. The end of the first half is coming right now. And so at halftime, it's Parramatta 8, Canterbury 4. A sideline comment from former Bulldog, Graham Hughes. Well, as I already mentioned, Parramatta territorially with, uh, came up with trumps in that first half, but Canterbury certainly did start to finish stronger in the first spell of 40 minutes here as they received uh, a fairer share, of, a more equal share of possession. In the second half, as far as Canterbury is concerned, I'll be looking for a bigger running game from both Terry Lamb and also Andrew Farrar. A restart from Graham Atkins. So as Paul Langmack come back to the 22. Mark Bugden. 126 tackles required of Canterbury in the first half. 92 Parramatta. Done with 19, led the Canterbury count. 13 Lee Beater led the Parramatta count. This is Farrow now. <laughs> Lamb. Breeze most definitely behind Canterbury now that it's swung around. Atkins and with Parramatta with the ball inside their own 22 let's go to Graham Hughes he's been able to manage an interview with Stan Jewell. Stan how did you see that first half? Uh, it's pretty even at the moment we have had a lot of possession um, but you know well that's the name of the game if you've got the ball they can't score. Well it's always been touted as the game between arguably the competition's best attackers and the best defenders. Well that's right at the moment uh, we're on the board we've got more points than them so we're going to hold on to the ball the second half. I think we're going to go pretty good. Also a problem for Parramatta in that that breeze has turned around behind the ball. Uh, I mean, it's not that much of a breeze, but uh, yeah, it's a big game. It shouldn't worry us that much. How long are you up for, sir? Uh, this week only. OK, good luck. So the ball knocked on by Ray Price. In fact, Price doesn't... Well, he didn't know it, obviously, didn't he? He hasn't got eyes in the back of his head. How do you let that pass from Sterling go? It was on line to land right in the hands of Eric Groth and he was unmarked. Canterbury winning the scrum. Hagen beating Kenny, who went up very fast. Hagen, a good run. Parramatta would be somewhat disappointed that with all the possession they had in the first half, they haven't registered more points. And if Canterbury can come up with an even share of possession in this second stanza, they're going to be dangerous. Tunks felled by a low tackle from Carr. Now it's Lamb, Hagen. And Kenny again went up fast. He, he made his tackle that time. Now it's Langmack. Back for Bugden. Back for Dunn. Dunn up. Back for Folks now to the 10 metre line. Five tackles gone for the Bulldogs. Lamb gets the up and under in. And down it comes. And safely in the hands of Parramatta's Mark Laurie. 
This is the NEC replay of the, the up and under from Lamb. Beautifully positioned too it was, out in the field of play just fractionally. Played by Atkins. Now Sterling, his Bugden, uh, he's put it on the ground, so it's pressure now for Parramatta. This is Potter, tackled by Taylor, back to Campbell. He's tackled 20 metres out, right in front of the uprights. Now it's Langmac holding it back. Out it goes to Potter. This man is Farrah. They've got the numbers. Farrah gets a pass away and Peter Mortimer strolls over for a try. Eight points all in the NEC big game. Canterbury throwing it around, players wrapping around, creating extras, and Peter Mortimer eventually was left unmarked as Eric Groth had gone in to take, I believe it was Paul Langmack. The Parramatta defence has started this second half as it finished the first half. They're allowing Canterbury to stand in tackles, and here they pay the price, with Farrah standing up, slipping the ball back onto Peter Mortimer, who went round to improve his position. Try scorer Peter Mortimer. And eight points all. Lamb's kick, he likes it, but it's just gone away at the last moment. Eight points all, the NEC big game of the year. Locked. Parramatta and Canterbury. Stay the sideline comment from Graham Hughes. Well, the uh, mail coming from the Canterbury dressing room at, half, at the halftime break was that they were a very confident outfit. Uh, apparently all the forwards uh, had come up trumps. Parramatta, of course, as Billy Anderson said, enjoying the lion's share of possession in that first half. Stan Jurd just uh, offers some advice to us that he wasn't all that concerned about the fact that they only came up with the one try, but that was the, uh, that was the s signal for Canterbury to display that confidence. They felt that they had Parramatta simply because given that uh, even share of possession in the second half that they can finish much the stronger. Tunks. They're finding plenty of metres. Steve Mortimer running the bottle on occasions. Now it's Lamb who gets the kick in straight to Sterling. He seemed to have plenty of time then. Lamb too. It wasn't one of Terry's best kicks. Peter Wynn. Mark Laurie. The moment you take Sterling out of the Parramatta attack. Carr. Good run by the, uh, the replacement hooker. The moment Sterling gets out of that playmaker position, they, they just don't look like they know where they're going, some of them. Now he's back into the position. The number seven, Kenny. Kenny goes back into the middle. Five tackles gone for Parramatta. They're down just outside the Canterbury 22. Now it's with Sterling. He goes for a drop goal. It won't find it. And it's Michael Potter who brings it out. Taylor and Sterling make the tackle on the Canterbury fullback. Plenty of enthusiasm there from the little fellows. Hagen down but not held. Now he is. Done. Allowed to stand. Nobody cleaning up over the top. It's Gillespie. Been, that's been the pattern of all of this second half. Lamb was thinking about the kick. He's been able to get it away to Hagen. Now it's Potter. Five gone. Langmac. And that went out on the full. So it's coming back now for the scrum and the Parramatta feed. Scrum win to Parramatta. This is Kenny. That's Laurie. Win. 
ground practically shadowed now with 25 minutes of the game to go Bugden that was a good run by Bugden he had plenty of defense opposite him but they couldn't put him down he carried them forward 10 to 15 meters Kenny making the error Tunks with the ball Try scorer. I am, I'm not sure. I think it was Michael Potter. Let's have a look at the replay. There's no question that it's a try. Beautifully picked up by Terry Lamb on the half volley. Peter Mortimer went one way, then the other. Michael Potter it was who got the ball over. It's Peter Mortimer who scores the try. And there it is. It's too late. Andrew Farrer capitalized on the work of Peter Tunks prior to him handling the ball. Let's wait and see this ball as it is touched in flight. I think it was Steve Eller actually. And uh, Peter Mortimer picks up what could well be the match winning try. Two tries to Peter Mortimer. Jerry Lamb with a fairly simple kick. Only a slight angle. And he's got it. So Canterbury Banks down there now leads by the converted try margin. 14 to 8. Ella's drop kick is only ordinary. Although on the bounce it's gone down to Potter on the halfway. I don't think Canterbury have got any decision to make here. They should just take it up for two or three, get that extra one point cushion by kicking a field goal. Hagen. It's Chris Mortimer. Tunks. One more and that'll just about see it out. Folks. Now's the time. I think Lamb wants it right now. Hagen's got it. Langback. Lamb. He got the kick in. That's the shot. 15 points to eight in favour of the Bulldogs. Drop goal by Terry Lamb. 18 minutes of time remaining, 15-8, Canterbury leading. The beater. 7-6, the penalties to Canterbury, 4-2, the scrums to Parramatta. There's one fellow out there in the Parramatta team that uh, needn't worry about a thing as young Vince Carr, the Michael Mosley replacement. He's done a fine job. Sterling's kick to Potter. Potter, like the Michael Potter of all. In fact, this is the best play I've seen from Potter this year anyway, and certainly for a major part of last year as well. Peter Mortimer. Potter has saved his best for this big occasion, but some of this Parramatta defence hasn't. It'll be a constant worry now for John Maney because players are just not making tackles. Look, they're falling off time and time again. Ball spread right across to Andrew Farrer. Lamb. Taylor's got a problem with an arm. He's clutching at his right wrist. Penalty to Canterbury right in front of the uprights. So Lamb from right in front picks up another two-pointer for Canterbury. 17 to 8 in favour of the Premiers.
played by Langmack on his own 22. And Parramatta now most definitely looking down the barrel of their first defeat at uh, their new home ground. Oh, oh, that was a high tack along Gillespie, and he off. has sent him off. It is Terry Lee beat up. Price not impressed with the decision of the referee. And the referee had no hesitation in sending Terry Lee Beater off. Changes, Graham Hughes. Well, Graham Setry has gone out there for Parramatta in 23, replacing Jeff Bugden. Uh, Peter Ford, who was going to take the field in 21, uh, was also going out as a replacement for Terry Leavitter, obviously brought back from the sideline. John Elias uh, warming up for Canterbury Banks down in 22, and he'll take the place of uh, Peter Tunks. Tackle of Leavitter's, to me, appeared it caught him with the hand, it was high. That was swinging, but I don't think you'll find that it was actually the forearm that made contact with uh, David Gillespie. Turned inside nicely by Dunn, and outside it comes now. Chris Mortimer inside for Terry Lamb, over the top, touched by Parramatta. Hagen gets the ball away to Dunn. The referee didn't start the tackle count again. This is looking ominous for Parramatta. Canterbury at the moment, just too big and too strong. Tunks. Three metres out from the Parramatta line. Bugden looking for a try that he's almost come to believe is his entitlement against Parramatta. Peter Tunks from dummy half has scored... Canterbury's third try. Canterbury making that try anyway look all too easy. From dummy half, Tunks takes it across. In fact, he, he, I think he scored a try in the grand final, and a lot of people thought he used Steve Mortimer as a shepherd, but there was no hint of it on that particular occasion. Well, you could blame the number nine for Parramatta, Steve Sharp. He was standing almost totally upright. Tunks, who's a specialist from dummy half, had no problems going underneath him. Canterbury bolting away with it now. 21 to 8. Peter Ford on in 21. Steve Sharp comes off. Lamb's kick hits the upright. No goal. 21 to 8. Nine minutes to go. The NEC big game. Win to play it. Sentry. I wonder what thoughts are flooding through the mind of John Money. Ray Price, double movement, it'll be a penalty to Canterbury, it is. See it again. There's no question that it's a double movement. Price. What a great warrior he's been. He tackled everything in the first half that moved or looked like moving. Here he is, still working away, pumping away, trying to put some respectability back into the scoreline. Sterling, Kenny, long ball out to Taylor. But this Canterbury defence is hitting just as hard now as it was when this match opened. And now he's given a penalty to Parramatta Taylor not very impressed with the treatment dealt out to him Price is still trying to settle him The only 
thing that's keeping a bit of sanity in it is that leather ball. If there wasn't a ball there for them to concentrate on, they'd be at one another's throats. Well, the same token, I, I repeat something I said earlier. I don't think there was any need for... Other than the on-field combatants to get involved in it, it seemed to be a war of officialdom leading up to what was going to be a packed house anyway. Graham Hughes, I'll come to you in a moment with Steve Mortimer as Ray Price bullocks for the line. Now Sterling and Gillespie are trading punches. Well, Have a look at it again. Cameras follow the attempt at the try. But they were the only things that really followed the play. All eyes went to an on. Gillespie walked past Taylor and had some more to say. Atkins. Inside the last five, Ella. Taylor, Kenny, away from one, back to Setri. Taylor, Kenny, long ball to Sterling, they've got a score. Atkins gets the try that Parramatta's been working for for the last five to ten minutes. 21 to 12 the score. Graham Atkins, the try scorer. And maybe, I'm not suggesting for a moment that Parramatta has been unlucky here today, far from it. But there is an example of something Graham Hughes was suggesting to them a long, long time ago. Parramatta. You won't beat them up the middle, you've got to reach the extremities. Parramatta always had the numbers here, it was just a case of shifting the ball out wide, a long pass over the top, then Sterling finally drew and gave onto Atkins and he did the rest, scored in the corner. Graham Atkins to take the kick, a kick of little consequence really. Let's go to the sidelines, Graham Hughes with the Archbishop of Canterbury, Steve Mortimer. Steve, it's been a, a big performance in the second half, but I thought they won it in the first with their defence. They certainly did, mate. They hung in there for the first half, and I knew we'd come a lot stronger than Parramatta in the second half, and uh, there's not an ounce of champion these bases. I think it's a strong kilo in each one of these blokes out here today. Who do you think was outstanding for Canterbury? Can't pick them out, mate. I, I think our forwards, our forwards definitely show we have the best in the comp, and probably like to thank uh, Pricey for his extra motivation when he, um, he you know, uh, wrote in one of his comments about the players and the boys have really answered it on the football field and that's the only way to do it. Is the feeling that strong about that column of right process? Well, it's very strong, you know, uh, there is a player's code and we all respect that and uh, I think the players sat out here today, the only place to do it is on the uh, ground. But congratulations to Canterbury and I think the referee's been a very, very fair man today. Thanks, sir. There's the siren in the background, bringing down the curtain on this Parramatta-Canterbury clash. And after all the fire and the brimstone, now they meet and shake hands. It's a crazy world we live in. Canterbury, 21, Parramatta, 12, the battle of the stadium. Mortimer, Peter, 2, Tunks, 1, Lamb, 4 goals in the drop goal. Parramatta, Sterling and Atkins tries, and Atkins kicks.